171. Let's get to the fifth and final entry in the Indiana Jones franchise, which is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which came out in 2023. It is directed by James Mangold, who also did Logan, Night and Day, Walk the Line, The Wolverine, and some others. Oh, Ford versus Ferrari is another for him, big one. And four stars Harrison Ford, as well as Phoebe Waller Bridge, Antonio Banderas, Karen Allen, John Reese Davies, and, you know, Karen Allen are back. Shantae Renee Wilson, Toby Jones, Thomas Kretschmann, Mads Mikkelsen, and some others. And the synopsis is, archaeologist Indiana Jones races against time to retrieve a legendary artifact that can change the course of history. So I think with how 4 was received, this movie was definitely a surprise to many. Like, oh, they're going to do one more. Awesome. And before this one was announced, I was not really a certified indie head. I had seen them, but I was not like through the roof about it. And then said, all right, well, I am definitely curious. I want to see how this franchise ends. I've seen the first four. Let's do it. And even though this movie is not perfect, and I can see if you're middle of the road on it, similar to four, I get that. You know, this is just purely personal taste, so bear with me. Watching this movie, and then it also helped watching the Timeless Heroes documentary on Disney+, Plus, as well as the making of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which is like a 45-minute behind-the-scenes look. That just cemented my love for this franchise beyond all else. I don't know exactly why. Maybe it's just a combination of reasons I've already talked about. I don't want to retread all that. But watching this one, even though it's not my favorite, it'd be, I think, three in, you know, middle of the pack ranking wise. There's something about the heart of this movie and how it decides to resolve those characters in this world that just really hits me. And I feel like it's, to me, it's very emotional, especially towards the end. And I think it's one that I can always go back to. It's a very, in this day and age, even more so than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, the classic traditional action movie and adventure story that this is, you don't really get that anymore these days. You know, despite the flaws, it still has so many elements that really feel out of time in a good way for me. So now having seen the movie, I rewatch it all the time, maybe four times, five times. And I've seen the documentary two or three times as well. That's just something that I will always appreciate. And I can always go back to and really get into and enjoy. And I think, you know, James Mangold, when I heard it wasn't Spielberg, I was disappointed. Flat out. In hindsight, I would have preferred him having done the first four. I wish he had done the fifth one. And just have that cohesiveness of vision. And I think I could be wrong, but I think it was because of the West Side Story remake that he was doing that he couldn't direct it of when they were planning. I could be wrong there in terms of what he was doing at the time. Even though I like James Mangold a lot. I think Logan especially is amazing. I like really everything he's done to a certain extent. And of all the choices, I don't even know who I would pick besides Spielberg. But I think of all the people, I don't think he's a bad choice. He has good Western adventure aspects to his filmmaking he also has some good character work so I think he's a pretty well-rounded filmmaker and I think overall the direction in this is pretty good it's not Spielberg but it's still pretty good and as I was talking about with four seeing Indiana Jones as like an 80 year old guy you know coming out of retirement basically and having to keep up with all the young people and there's humor there there's the kind of respect and appreciation that he's still trying and that he has to accept himself, I can't do all these things like I used to. I'm going to make more mistakes. I'm going to tire out. I'm going to, you know, I could get myself killed way more likely than I would if I was in my 20s or 30s or 40s even. So I think I really, really like that. And that also gives you that life of a character of when he puts up his hat for the last time. Oh, and another quick thing that I saw. Now, I did remember seeing this in the news. I could be telling tales out of school here, but I think this was true, at least was a rumor, take it with a grain of salt, but I remember when I think this was first announced that there were some people saying that they were going to try and reboot the character in some way and have it be younger as opposed to being Harrison Ford old, and I heard that Chris Pratt was apparently like a fan favorite to do that or a favorite of, I don't know, the internet. I am so thankful that did not happen. I think Chris Pratt. He's really 
he's kind of lost on me now. I think he's become pretty boring as an actor for the most part. I used to really love him and look forward to everything he's in, but I think he's really lost all of his edge, a lot of his charm. Sorry if that upsets people, but I'm so glad they did not recast him as Chris Pratt, and I hope they never, ever do. Sorry, Chris, but it's Harrison Ford. You got to have him. So that was a big relief. That would have been horrible. But talking about the cast of the movie itself, besides Ford, uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, love her and everything. I think she is so funny, and she now clearly has some good versatility in what she can do. She's a great character in the world, and I think the writing is very strong as well. Mads Mikkelsen, fantastic actor, so underrated. He's a perfect villain in this. Very, very good. I like the design of the character. And Antonio Banderas, he pops up for a little bit. The young boy in this, who it was his first role, I don't can't find his name here. He's very, very good. I, I love him. He just has a good youthfulness to him and charm and wildness as well. And then actually talking about, you know, because the movie's not perfect, fully admit that. Having watched it many times now, I don't mind if they de-age an actor to show a flashback. I'm generally okay with that because you can pretty much make it look good at this time, at least mostly believable. And effects-wise, visually, how they de-age Harrison Ford for that opening 20-minute sequence is, you know, solid. I, I don't really have an issue with that. But I feel like it could have been shortened. I think all the action is awesome, and I like spending time in the World War II setting and that night chase uh, with the train and moving through the train and the sleight of hand and misdirection and even the stuff in the church where he's being tied up and then the missile hits there. I think that's a really good opening. And I know from what I heard, they were planning a shorter, like a five-minute sequence to have him de-aged, and then they were going to get into the rest of the story. And I, it's maybe it's hard to say exactly what would be better, like with what they had planned originally, but I feel like it goes on a little too long for what the movie is, for what the overall story is. So I think that sequence, I don't mind it being two and a half hours long. Honestly, I wish it could have been three and a half hours, but I think that that opening piece does, it's a little too extended for what it is, but not a huge deal. Then we get into Indiana Jones where he's retiring from teaching and then Phoebe Waller-Bridge shows up and gets him wrapped up into this last adventure. And having watched the documentaries, the production design and all the stuff that is practical in this movie is insane. Like creating whole parades, all these huge rooms. And it's really, it shows you when you have the right cast, the right money and, you know, right budget, you can do insane things if you choose to with how authentic and how real you create an actual movie set. Not everything has to be effects, you know? And so that's another thing is I appreciate is they say, all right, let's do as many things practical as we can. Even if it's not Spielberg, it's like, all right, let's do the least amount of crazy CG that we can. So the whole parade chase where he's on the horse and then he goes down to the subway, that's very good. The little chase in the office and the library, like that's right beforehand. And then they get put into the truck. That's very entertaining. Like I'm always entertained through this whole movie. Maybe some people get bored or think it's too bloated. I don't feel that way. I'm always engaged. And one of the biggest set pieces of the movie is the Tangier motorcycle car chase. And I think that one thing with Mangold is I think some of the action, as with the first opening, each one sometimes goes on a little too long. You know, I don't mind it being long again, but I think that there are certain things that I wish they had, all right, let's cut this here and get into something else. So I think even though I'm really enjoy all that happens in that sequence, I think it does at times like, oh, wow, this is still going, you know, and I don't think it really needs to for what the movie it is. I get it's they're trying to make money. And I know this movie did horribly at the box office or not horribly, but it did lose quite a bit of money, which is really a shame. I wish I had done two billion dollars, but that's not the case. And I don't think it ever would be. But uh, I do like the reintroduction of Sala briefly. I like how he shows up. And he's like, give him hell, Indiana Jones. I think just little callbacks to like the originals and that those old relationships feel very lived in, feel authentic. You know, I believe that those were people who saw each other decades ago and they're reuniting. The score, of course, by John Williams, amazing. That theme never gets old, will always cherish it. And I can just go back and listen to the whole score of all the movies and really just escape 
into Indiana Jones world. There's also the, I think one of the coolest, the most creative sequences is the underwater scuba sequence with the eels. I think that's really clever. And that's a very effectively concise action piece where it's really maybe five minutes, something like that, but it's really intense, suspenseful, and a good showcase for, all right, little bits of action can work just as much as 20 minute long ones. But one of the biggest parts of the movie is that, and I love this. I know some people may like with Crystal Skull where they say, oh, you're going too far into supernatural stuff or it's too ridiculous. I, I get the criticism. I don't feel that way with these movies. I think the idea of, and I wasn't expecting it either, but the idea of Indiana Jones literally going back in time and seeing the people who he has studied for his whole life is so touching. And I think the moment where he's like, I'm going to stay, you know, I, I want to be here. I've, I'm actually getting to live in history and having spent decades and decades studying it, teaching it, discovering it. I think that is so human and real and very heartfelt that I really was not expecting it to hit as hard as it did for me. And maybe that's because I love history so much, but I think that whole visual, like the effects, amazing, where they go into ancient times and there's that massive war or battle going on. And then there's the plane flying over and everyone thinking it's a dragon, you know, and the, then them shooting the machine guns down onto the ships and the crash with Indy. I think all that is really intense and so epic and cool. And what is another good writing moment besides just Indiana Jones saying, I'm going to stay, is clearly. If he did, we wouldn't have Indiana Jones before. You know, he would not be a person that, within the context of the world, that we know. So that is no good. We can't have that. And so Phoebe Waller-Bridge realizes that. Like, no, I understand what you're saying, but punch in the face, you're coming with me. I think that is spot-on writing. Because in another franchise, you could say, or you could see them saying, all right, he's just going to stay. You know, that's what people want. That's what's going to be the most affecting or the most cool. But in this, no, that's not who the character really is or should be, to me at least. I think that is a very good ending because you get time to spend in that moment where he's like, I want to stay. I think this is so interesting and so it's hitting me so hard I can't leap. But then you get the reality check of Phoebe Waller-Bridge. So I love that. And even before that, the whole cave sequence where they're having to meander through the different tunnels and the water, all that's very good and compelling. So I think that this movie, you know, there are flaws, as I said, and I, you know, understand if this is just meh for you or not how you want to end it. It's, it is what it is. I get it. You know, it's to each their own, but I like how they have ended the franchise with this movie, at least with Indiana Jones, that character. Maybe they'll find a way to reboot it in another part of the world without Indy, you know, but still in the world of Indiana Jones. I don't know. But I like here. He's 80 years old now. Harrison Ford is very old. This is the end of the franchise. So I think that's a very daring, respectable choice to make storytelling wise. Oh, and briefly, the moment where they're on the plane, and actually even the look of Phoebe Waller Bridge riding the motorcycle in the rain to get on the plane. Amazing. Love that visual. Looks so good. Effects wise, lighting, cinematography, really good sequence. And then when she gets on the plane and then Mads Mikkelsen's character realizes, oh crap, I haven't thought this all the way through. And Indiana Jones helps him realize that. And then there's this huge portal in the sky and they zoom into it and, you know, crash land. That's really inventive. So all that is strong. And that final little resolution with Indiana Jones being home and saying, why did you do this? Like, why am I here? Who am I living for? And then Marion walks in. And that's really the end of the story. That's all he needs. He's done his job. He's done more than enough. So he can literally hang up his hat and spend the rest of his life in peace. I really, really like that. And it, it just works so much better than a lot of other franchises like it. And Indiana Jones just rules. The guy's the best. He's king. All right, well, that one is a heavy four and a half out of five. <laughs> 